living by you forever. I'm your friend. You'll always be right here with me. I'm so thankful for your love, no matter what I do. I know this is true. You're by my side. You'll never leave. I want to thank you, God, for showing me who I am. You're so good. You help me to understand. spelling is that? Oh, hey, welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about gratitude while we take a look at a super helpful habit. Ha! Shout out to whoever invented the eraser. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about gratitude. Which is letting others know you see how they've helped you. Who's the car for? My big sister. She's basically the best sister in the world. You got any scientific evidence for that? Well, she helped me learn to ride a bike. Plus, she always checked my closet for monsters. I like to eat socks. And when I couldn't understand fractions, she made it all easy. This is one sixth of a pizza. See? Best sister in the world. Okay, that's pretty convincing evidence. Are you doing anything for her birthday? Now, see, that's the problem. What's the problem? Well, she loves cinnamon rolls, so every year for her birthday breakfast, I get her these awesome, gooey cinnamon rolls. No problem there. But this year she went gluten-free, and I can't find any gluten-free cinnamon rolls anywhere. Well, why don't you make them? Because I'm not a pastry chef. I know how you can learn in five minutes. Five minutes? For reals? For reals. Then, let's make it. Okay, where do we start? One tablespoon of oil. What are we mixing it in? This. Cinnamon rolls in a mug? Gluten-free cinnamon roll, microwavable mug cake, to be exact. Genius. There we go. Okay, what next? Two tablespoons of sugar. 
Add one egg yolk. Wait, how do you put in just the egg yolk? Like this. Use your hand like a sieve. So as you can see, the egg yolk is splitting from the egg white. And then when you have nothing but the yolk, put it in the mug. Looks delicious. Now, you mix that up with a fork while I go wash my hands. Please. All right, great. Then we add two tablespoons of milk. Like that. And then a one-fourth cup of all-purpose gluten-free flour. Zeke, would you be so kind? Of course. You can also just use regular flour if you don't need it to be gluten-free. Then a one-eighth teaspoon baking powder and half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Now, mix it all up, uh, uh, gently. Wow, that's it? Well, we still gotta make some ooey gooey frosting, but right now, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Exodus, and the book of 1 Corinthians. In the beginning, God created an amazing world. But people forgot God and turned away. The world was broken. God chose one family, the Israelites, and promised to bless the entire world through them. But God's people were enslaved in the land of Egypt for hundreds of years. The people cried out to God, and God saved them. But it's so easy to forget the amazing things God has done. So God told the people to hold a celebration. Each year they would eat a special meal to help them remember how God saved them. And though the Israelites did forget again and again, they still came back to that special meal. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. More than a thousand years after God led the people out of Egypt, Jewish people were still celebrating that special meal, the Passover. In fact, the night before Jesus gave up his life, he ate the Passover meal with his closest friends. Take this and eat it. Now, each time the Jewish people ate the Passover meal, it reminded them of how hard they had been forced to work in Egypt. Then God sent Moses to face down Pharaoh and demand freedom for the Israelites. Let my people go. Over and over, Pharaoh promised to let the Israelites go, but then changed his mind. And each time, God sent a plague, a, a terrible warning, so Pharaoh would release the Israelites. There were frogs, flies, hail, darkness, and more. Finally, God sent the tenth and most terrible plague of all. The Lord says, every oldest son in Egypt will die. It was a terrible day. But God made a way to save the sons of the Israelites. Go at once. Each family must kill a Passover lamb. Put some of the blood on top and on both sides of the doorframe. The Lord won't let the destroying angel enter your homes. The Israelites did just as God had told them. After a heartbreaking night, the Israelites were saved. At last, Pharaoh ordered them to leave. Get out of here. Go. The Israelites packed up so quickly they didn't even have time for their bread to rise, so they baked flat bread without yeast. Mmm, crunchy. Then God led them out of Egypt to freedom. God told the people, always remember this day. You and your children after you must celebrate this day as a feast to honor the Lord. So as God instructed, the Israelites made a habit of celebrating Passover with a meal that included lamb and flat bread with no yeast, like the bread they'd taken on their journey out of Egypt. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe. Jesus himself grew up celebrating the Passover every single year. But when he shared the Passover with his friends the night before he died, Jesus did something different. He gave a brand new meaning to the Passover meal. The Apostle Paul wrote about that evening years later in his letter to the Corinthians. On the night the Lord Jesus was handed over to his enemies, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. He said, this is my body. 
it is given for you. Every time you eat it, do it in memory of me. The bread was a reminder of how the very next day, Jesus would give himself up and allow himself to be killed for us. Paul continued, In the same way, after supper he took the cup. He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Every time you drink it, do it in memory of me. The drink was a reminder of how Jesus would allow his own blood to be spilled so that we can live. And because of Jesus, we don't have to try to prove to God that we're good enough. All we have to do is believe that Jesus came to rescue us and choose to follow him. Jesus took that old habit of gratitude, the Passover, and turned it into a brand new habit of gratitude, the Lord's Supper or communion. The Passover meal was a celebration of how God had rescued the Israelites from slavery. Now, the Lord's Supper is a celebration of how God has made it possible for everyone to be rescued from sin and death through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And for the last 2,000 years, people have been celebrating what Jesus did for us by eating bread and drinking wine or juice together. Some churches do it every Sunday or every month. Others might do it a few times a year. They use different kinds of bread or wafers or wine or juice. But in every case, the habit is the same. It's a beautiful chance to remember together the amazing way that God has rescued us and how God has given us so much. We can always be thankful. The end. You know, it's super easy to think all these Bible stories are kind of random, but no way. It's all connected in such an incredible way. First, God made a plan to save one family, the Israelites. And from that family, God made a plan to save everyone who follows Jesus. Yeah, and God gave us a special way to remember. So what's our part in the story? Well, just like the Israelites, we can form habits of gratitude. One of the easiest ways to start is with mealtime. Yeah, when we thank God for our food. Now, your family might already have that habit. If not, you could start it. And you can always take a few moments and thank God for your food, even if you're eating on your own or at school. It doesn't even have to be out loud. You can connect habits of gratitude to other parts of the day, too. Like when you wake up, you can thank God for a brand new day even if you're not a morning person. <laughs> you could also make a habit of thanking your teacher anytime they help you at school. Or your parents when they help you at home. And at night, before you go to bed, take time to think back through your day. You can choose one specific thing to thank God for, like how good it felt to hit that ball super hard, or if your mom made your favorite dinner. Or just the amazing fact that your heart is beating and your lungs are taking in air, all because God makes it happen. So, we can make a habit of thanking God in the morning, at mealtime, at school, and at bedtime. Yeah, and the awesome thing about habits is that they actually blah, 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 rewire your brain. So if you start with one time and focus on being thankful every day, in about eh, three weeks, your brain will remind you automatically. I'm thankful God made our brains so awesome. <laughs> you got it. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Make a habit of being grateful. I am grateful in advance for this delectable mug cake. Can we zap it yet? Sure thing. Ooh, zap. Frosting, please. Yeah, right in there. That's perfect. Right there? Okay. It's glorious. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Mm, yum. It's so delicious. I'm definitely making the habit of this for my sister's birthday. Oh yeah, she's gonna love this. Mm-hmm.